having helped to stem the red tide, was tapped for a second midnight ride. This new mission involved beer and potato chips, and this time our hero was riding for tips. Freedom fighting is noble, no one will dispute, but earning a living is likewise a worthy pursuit. Yeah. Well, anyway, <laughs> uh, greetings and welcome to another exciting edition of Poet the Poet. I'm Robert Dunn. I'll be guiding you through this taffy pole. And we're here at the Long Island Coffee House on Post Avenue in Westbury, Long Island, a rather scenic community and a rather scenic coffee house. Believe it or not, they have all these strange art forms all over the walls um, on purpose, too, and with the consent of the management. And, and thanks to Jim and VJ and the, uh, and the gang for letting us uh, come in here and film today. Our guests include Judith Morley over here in the floral print and um, Kenneth Churchill in the other kind of print. Uh, that's the most obscure plaid I've ever seen. We'll ask him about his tartan later in the program. But first, I want to get to Judith Morley. Now, Judith is the author of Myths, Laughing House, and The Reluctant Mystic as engaging a combination as I've come across in some time. Uh, she has several poems in uh, magazines such as Quest, and uh, let's see, you were doing a, uh, some sort of uh, workshop on mythic and transformational process with Jean Dixon. Uh, no, Jean Houston. <laughs> Jean Houston, right. get the name. Um, and Judith also studied acting with Stella Dallas, is that it? Well, you're close, but no cigars, oh. Stella Adler. Well, I don't smoke. Well, that's why I know cigar. All right, Judith, welcome to Poet the Poet. Glad to be uh, here. How about a little poem? All right. Um, a little one? Mm -hmm. That I am here in this tight house with this good man, with these nice kids, these old friends, this fine food, this warm clothes, and not in an earthquake or a revolution or a prison or a plague puzzles me. Are you puzzled now? Still puzzled. Uh -huh. Life is a mystery, and I explore the mysteries. I like to peek at the back of the book myself to see how the mystery res is resolved before I go any further. <laughs> is that <laughs> if that's a question, you'd better rephrase it. No, it wasn't a question. It's just one of those one, uh, one of those pithy observations that goes uh, right out into the boondocks and never comes back again. How did you get started in this uh, poetry racket? Well, I started in the poetry racket uh, in 1979, March 11. Uh -huh. uh, right in there. You have it pinpointed? That I exactly? have it pinpointed. I had written some adolescent stuff, which uh -huh. never pleased me, but, but I never showed that to anyone. Oh. And then on March 11 in 1979, Jean Houston, with whom I was working at the time, mm -hmm suggested that we explore, each, explore and experience each moment as if all of creation is blooming and, and we're a part of it. And she called it the epiphany of the moment. Uh -huh. And uh, at that time, it wasn't a matter of writing anything down. It was a matter of experiencing. But I was an inveterate journal keeper. Mm -hmm. So I started writing the moments down. And mm -hmm. before long, I had about 100 poems. And uh, they ended up uh, and will be published in two, it, two volumes in one book. One is called Miss Laughing House and the Listener. The other is called The Reluctant Mystic. And I call the book together Miss Laughing House and the Reluctant Mystic. Together again for the first yeah. time. And if I'll, you go. How about another one of these epiphanies that uh, All right. you mentioned? I had a long talk with my son last night. I'll never forget it. I've always known if only I could hear his heart. If only I could understand his understanding. If only I could crack that door stuck shut between us. And I did. I had a long talk with my son last night. I will never forget it. We sat in the kitchen, of course, and I, I trembled with both joy and fear at the intensity of the conversation. He was awash with cares, and deep, deep pain burned through his face. I answered with love, and some confusion, and not without a bit of dread, but it was good. I had a long talk with my son last night. I will never forget it. Till 4 a.m., we sat and opened up our hearts and wept each other's tears, till even the chairs grew weary. Now, I knew I'd never forget it. Still, when we kissed goodnight, I rushed to take the journal where I keep my thoughts and feelings, should my memory ever fail me, and I recorded it. 
and now it is next week. And I remember sitting there. I remember how he looked. I remember how I felt. But I cannot quite recall just what we said. And so with gratitude that I recorded it, I, I rushed to read the, the journal where I keep my thoughts and feelings should my memory ever fail me. And I open up the page, and this is what it says. I had a long talk with my son last night. I will never forget it. <laughs> Have you considered a tape recorder? <laughs> After this, yes. Uh -huh. So, what else do you do besides uh, record these, uh, these epiphanies? Have you done any hot acting lately? Um, not recently. Recently, most of the acting has been uh, stand up with the poetry. Uh -huh. and, uh, and the acting kind of feeds the poetry. The acting feeds some poetry workshops. What, was, uh, what were some of the more interesting roles you had when you were acting? I love the Greeks. Uh -huh. uh, and as a matter of fact, working with Gene Houston, uh, who brings mythic awareness into everyday consciousness, I did monologues of Medea, wrote monologues of Clytemnestra. Mm -hmm. I have a poem that uh, kind of covers the, the gamut of what I did. Uh, and it's in the, poem? Yes, it's in the current issue of Quest. As a matter of fact, it's in the book, which is coming out in about six weeks. Uh -huh. But this, this is the one that includes some of the roles I've played. Mm -hmm. I've been reading the old myths. I've been reading of Uranus burying his sons alive deep inside the earth. The earth. Earth. Of Cronus gulping down his children one by one as they are born. Born. Born of Tantalus stewing Pelops in the pot as supper for the gods, 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 of Agave, agave tearing Pentheus apart limb from limb with bare hands, 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 of Procne dishing up boiled Itis to his dad, dad, dad. Did she stuff a clump of parsley in his mouth when she cooked the boy? Are we doing it still, killing our children? in subtler ways, perhaps, perhaps, perhaps. I used to find parsley so tantalizing, <laughs> but now... You know, never again. Never again. Never no. again. And what do you see in your future? Oh, uh, in my future? Actually, I've been very supportive of a group of a uh, health community called the Parkinson Disease foundation and I've been spending time in that community and I think I will be spending more time in workshops and using poetry perhaps mm -hmm. as a means of reaching the depths of the, of the consciousness of the, of the people involved. Well, let's scale the heights to uh, some more depths and get another poem in, shall another we? Another poem, another quickie. Uh, the, the, the poetry that I've been doing uh, has followed the mythic, the mythic in, in a way I'd like to mythic hero's journey. So in uh, the second part of this book, uh, The Reluctant Mystic, the poems fall into f five categories. I wrote them down so I wouldn't miss them. But the, <laughs> the hero's journey, the call to an adventure of the spirit. This is what most of the poems are about. Even, Sounds like home. Even if they're about life in the kitchen, which many of them are. Mm -hmm. Then uh, the, the, after the call to adventure is the refusal of the call, in which the heroine hears the invitation but sends regrets. <laughs> then there's an initiation in which the heroine discovers that ordinary life is a road of trials, followed by the dark night of the soul in which she wanders for 40 years in a spiritual desert, and then the return in which she turns back onto the path she left as a child. You know, and that sounds like what happens whenever I go into my kitchen. I'm sure Ken will bear me out on that. And so the poems follow that pattern. The first mm -hmm. group of poems in the book called Miss Laughing House and a, and a Listener uh, it is about life in the kitchen, life out back in the backyard, uh, life, uh, the mysteries of life. And if you'd like, have we time for one I more? I think we can get that. Well, let's do one of the mysteries. Mm -hmm. I am jigging down the street, happily window shopping a gift for my favorite nephew, when I see a little round ball of a lady trying without success to hand leaflets to passers-by. Feeling sorry for her, I take one. She grabs my shoulder, breathing heavily. Hi, I'm Madame Rosa, and you are unfortunate. 
hand unsatisfied, hand life has been miserable this year. Taken aback but amused, I put my hand on her shoulder, replying, I am very fortunate, I have a nice big house, and very satisfied. My husband gives me everything I need, and life has been wonderful. We went to Paris, France this year. She will not buy my argument. If you will come with me, then let me read the cards. My God-giving powers will remove the curse that scars your soul and chills your home. No need, thank you kindly, I reply, strolling away casually, while the voice within wonders. What does she know that I don't know? What does she see that I don't see? Oh, nothing, I reply, tossing her calling card to the ground. But my ancient heart, pound, pound, pound. <laughs> yeah, I've had times like that on the subway. And in reading the tea leaves, because I'm also a little psychic myself, yeah. or something that sounds a lot like psychic, but uh, at least people have been telling me that, I think we can get another poem. Another, 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 another. Something huh? worthy of our talents here. Let's, um, let's see. Uh, here's one. When I, for when I reach 85. The children want me to go to a really nice golden age hotel where the food is great and they have razzmatazz dances and take trips to museums. After all, mother, they say you are 84 years young. Old, old, I am 84 years old. Do not humiliate me with euphemisms. I'm not a senior citizen, I'm an old lady. I'm not a golden ager, I'm an old lady. Easy does it, Ma, you have the rheumatiz. Rheumatiz, my foot. <laughs> a little stroke is closer to it. It's my body, and I know what's happening to it. So forget the malarkey about trips to museums. I can hardly take a trip to the bathroom in my own house. <laughs> but don't shut me off from the sounds of the living, the sweet milk ooing of a nursing baby, the kids screaming up the stairs after school, the call of a neighbor passing by, the, the crusty bark of the fierce Pekingese, the, the hoot and holler of a backyard ball game, the, the magoo voice of the parson come to call. Let me see the wintry chill behind the comfort of the kitchen lamp at dusk, and let my loved ones gather by my bed, and let me say farewell in my own time and leave with love. Oh, that's so Stephanie Cole, when you think about it. Ah, Judith Morley, thank you for being on Poet the Poet, and we'll be back in a moment with Kenneth Churchill and all sorts of surprises, so stay with us. Thank you. <laughs> 